welcome back to the channel everybody today we're going to talk about torque and what torque means in your race car in your street car when someone says torque is meaningless horsepower is all that matters or you have somebody else possibly an engineering type that says horsepower is irrelevant torque is all that truly matters what are they talking about are they wrong are they right that's what we're going to get into today now obviously we all know if you buy a car, it's rated in horsepower and torque. Most of us know that the formula to figure out horsepower is torque times RPM divided by 5252. That goes back to James Watt in the early 1800s. It's the amount of force that a draft horse could do in a coal mine. But we're talking about race cars. So what does torque mean for us? Is torque truly important? Is torque something that we don't really need, we look at Formula One cars that rev to 20,000 RPM, how much torque do one of those make? We look at a diesel, that's all they make is torque. What truly matters as far as torque? To get to the point, my personal feeling, and the feeling of a lot of people, is that it's a balance of both. So as an example, if you were to say, I made... 700 horsepower and 560 foot-pounds or your friend says I made 900 horsepower and 560 foot-pounds I could tell you right away without even doing math that the person that made less horsepower and the same torque didn't rev as high the person that made more horsepower at the same torque was revving a lot further or made torque a lot higher so we start getting into the shape of the power band. Now, you're looking at a picture of my car. Everybody knows it's a V6. It's front-wheel drive. That's definitely a case of where torque is the enemy. So I've spent a lot of time to figure out how to make the torque hook up, how to get it to the ground. And that leads us to a formula for what's called tractive force or traction force. There's, I think, two acceptable names for it. We're going to switch to the formula here real quick. Now when you look at it right here we have FT equals TQ times RT times RFD times E divided by D. FT is going to be the tractive force or as I will often tell people that's torque at the axle not at the bottom of the tire that is torque at the axle. Torque TQ input from crankshaft or wheel estimate. We all use dynos that measure it at the wheel, so that's typically what you're going to hear me talk about anyway. I don't have an engine stand dyno here. RT is the current gear ratio, whether it's second or third or whatever. That's going to look something like, in, in most cases, 1.25 to 1. That's fourth gear for a V6. RFD, final drive gear ratio. If you have an Evo, it's going to be 4.253. My V6 is 3.285 as an example. E, efficiency percentage loss. This is one that kind of is a little bit of a thorn in my side. I don't truly believe it's easy to calculate, so I don't use it. And if you're using wheel torque, your drivetrain loss, whether it's 10%, 30%, whatever imaginary number somebody hands you, don't use that. D, we're dividing by something here. D is the radius in inches divided by 12. 12 inches because it's foot pounds of the drive tire. So for instance, I have a 26.3 inch tire. I'm going to be 13.15 divided by 12. And that's going to be what my term for D is in this case. So now let's look at two examples here. We're going to switch to the dyno software of cars that make 580 and 561 foot pounds. Very, very close. But as you can see, there's a substantial difference in what the power band looks like. The blue line is a 3.5 liter with a 6466. And as you can see, it really starts to taper off right about here. 6700 RPM, the torque just is dropping. Some of this is camshaft, some of that's turbo. Some of it was the amount of boost I was commanding. The red line continues to climb. That's also a 3.5 liter with cams, 
a slightly different intake manifold and an 83 millimeter turbo. So it makes power a lot higher up. But you see these two numbers here, 580 and 560, very similar torque. Goes back to the example I was talking about earlier. I can tell a lot by the amount of horsepower to the ratio of torque. Now we come down here, we have force. Dynojet's really cool because it measures the amount of thrust at the tire, that FT term, the tractive force. And so we see that the blue line, even though it was slightly less torque, it made about 2,400 foot-pounds to the tire. And the red line made 2,254. So if we were to do some math real fast, we could come up with these numbers. So let's switch to the calculator. We're going to move it over so we can kind of see what we're doing here. We're going to go right down to 6,900 RPM. So you can see there it makes 580 foot-pounds in that particular example. We're, we're only going to worry about the, the red line. So if I can grab it. 580. I know that I was in fourth gear. 1.25 times 3.285. We have 2381. What's going on? Well, in this particular case, I wasn't on a 26-inch tire. I was dynoing it on a 24.5-inch tire. So the D term was less of a modifier as the red line where I was running a 26. So remember that number, 2381. I'm going to go 24.5 divided by 2 because we want the radius, divided by 12. It's 1.0208. So if we take that, I guess it was actually 561 times 1.25 times 3.285 divided by 1.0208, 2256. Now we take the 580. Do the same math, 1.25 times 3.285. In this case, it's about 1.09, 2184. So there's a little bit of discrepancy. Obviously, the tire height wasn't exact in either of these examples, but it gives you an idea of the relationship between tire size and reduced torque at the tire. Now what all this means is you can estimate fairly accurately the amount of power that you can hook on any given car because you can look at this torque in a dyno sheet versus your wheel slip at the track and say, for example, this particular case, I could put this down in third gear. 921, 580 foot-pounds. It's both of them together. It's not just the torque. It's not just the horsepower. But both of them together gives us an idea of what we can do. Because our, our understanding of horsepower needs to change just a little bit. A lot of people are like, oh, it's brute force. Horsepower, as was made evident in a Hot Rod magazine decades ago, is the ability for an engine to gain RPM. If you think of it that way, you want horsepower because you want the engine to accelerate more per second than if it was a lower number. Well, we do that because of the torque. Because we hold that torque flat, it takes both of them. But we're never going to hook more than what the car can do. Now, if we come back to the calculator real quick, I happen to know that this was really close to zero slip on my car. If we go five, oops, 580 times 1.7, which is third gear in my car, 3.285. We have a number of 3239. Now we're going to divide it by that 1.09 because at the track I do run the 26. We're down to 2,970 foot-pounds of force. I won't usually use the word force. I'll, I'll say axle torque, I'll say thrust, whatever. But the proper term is force. So that gives you an idea of what this car should be able to do in every gear. It's going to get modified because from a standstill, you're never going to hook as much. And as the car goes faster, you're going to have more downforce. So this number can come up or down. But as a general rule of thumb, if we start with that number, 
and work backwards. We're going to take the final drive back out. We know the tire is going to stay the same. And now we're going to divide it by first gear in the stock transmission, which is a creeper gear, 393. So 0% slip, I'm going to be 230 foot pounds. Well, my car does that without a turbo. I'm always going to have some slip. So we're going to have to come up with some really advanced traction control stuff, which if you want to watch a 16 minute video on that, there will be a, a link in the description. But there's ways around this. We can use drive-by wire. We can use timing retard. The traction control video gets into it a little bit more. Now, if we take this, divide it by the 3285, and then divide it by 2.478. This is second gear. We see that the same total force at the tire ends up being basically 365 foot-pounds, which is what the car makes at six pounds of boost. Which in that traction control video, you can see there's 18% slip, and then 5, and 11, and 5, and back and forth in first gear. And then second ends up pretty much hooked at the same boost level, because now all of a sudden it'll hook that torque. So this is going to be part one of a series on advanced concepts. This one I'm going to call advanced torque. If it's something you want to see more of, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you need further explanation on. If you feel that this is a subject that you really do like, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button, share with your friends. Hopefully this will help you set your car up more effectively so that we can all be faster. This competition's where it's at. Have a good one, guys. Take care.